Hey guys, Josh here with some bass in your face. Today we are going to finish our exploration of the diatonic modes with the Locrian scale. The most mysterious of the modes. The Locrian mode is the seventh mode built off of the parent major scale. So if you're in the key of C major, B would be your Locrian scale because B is the seventh note of the C major scale. Or if you were in the key of A, then G-sharp Locrian would be your relative Locrian scale. Um, so, the reason Locrian is kind of the most weird and mysterious of the modes is basically that it has a diminished fifth. Unlike the other six of the seven total modes, uh, Locrian is the only mode with a diminished fifth in it. Uh, the Lydian mode has a raised fourth, but it also has a perfect fifth, whereas the Locrian mode has a perfect fourth and a diminished fifth. The result that that has is that there are no songs that are in the key of, you know, E Locrian or G Locrian or whatever, although we're going to learn a tune that's almost in a Locrian key. Um, but the reason is that as a, you know, as bass players, part of, a huge part of our role in a band is to create a harmonic foundation that's also locked in with the, the rhythmic foundation of the drums, but the way that we do that is typically with roots and fifths, because fifths are the most uh, harmonically consonant note after a unison and an octave to any given note. So if you want to establish the key of C, the first thing you need to do is play a C, but the next thing you need to do is play a G, because up the harmonic series you get a unison, an octave, and then uh, a fifth. So um, fifths are really important part of establishing key, and the Locrian mode does not have a perfect fifth. So it's a very unstable scale, and it's typically used on passing chords, not as a key, whereas a song could easily be in a major key or a minor key. There's very few songs in a Locrian key, although uh, once we learn these, the scale, we're gonna learn Juice Box by The Strokes, which uh, is a really cool riff in E Locrian, and the song is mostly in E Locrian, but we'll talk about that more later. So, to follow along today, once we finally start playing, now that I've created this grand exposition for Locrian scales, uh, click below and download the free PDF. It's really free, I promise, and um, that'll help you follow along today with sheet music and tablature and left hand fingerings and all that good stuff. Isn't that just swell to have that fancy little PDF there? So now that you've gotten that, we are going to uh, learn an E Locrian scale, and we're going to learn two different shapes uh, for your left hand that you can play it with. And the reason I give you multiple shapes to learn these scales with is, first of all, just to increase your neck knowledge and to see that you can play these scales with different shapes, but also uh, the different shapes will lead to different notes when you're improvising or creating riffs or whatever. Uh, so it's useful to learn these scales in a couple different configurations. Okay, so let's just uh, dive right into it. We're going to start with the E Locrian scale starting on your second finger. Uh, and we're going to play through the scale a couple times with the drums, okay? So here we go. One, two, three, four. dive right into exercise two and then we'll talk a little more before we get to juice box. So this is the same scale, same seven notes, just starting on our first finger and playing the same seven notes in a slightly different configuration. Okay, so here we go with the drums. One, two, three, four. So now you know the Locrian scale uh, in two different shapes you can play it with, and remember that you can take these shapes and move them around the neck and play in different keys. So you could take that same shape we just played, move it down two frets, now it's D Locrian, or move it up to the 12th fret on the A string, now it's A Locrian, or you know 7th fret on the E string, now it's B Locrian. Uh, so make sure to practice this in different keys, it'll really help solidify your knowledge of the shape. Uh, and not just have you limited to one spot on the neck. And also, the more times you play the scale, the more it gets in your ear. And on that note, I just want to say, like I do in all my scale videos, that it's really important to improvise uh, using these scales when you're learning them. Otherwise, it's just like, oh yeah, I saw that scale in some video. But if you actually 
uh, improvise with it, then you can explore how all the notes of the scale sound in relation to the root and how it sounds different to similar scales. Like in this case, the closest scale to Locrian is the Phrygian mode, uh, which has a perfect fifth but otherwise is identical. Um, so you can hear how that one note difference makes it different than the Phrygian scale and just explore around. So E is a nice key to do that in like we're working on today because it gives you your open E to uh, use as a drone. So as you play up the scale, you can, you know, drone your low E and hear how the notes sound in relation, and you can do that in a more free kind of exploration-y way. I mean, the main thing you'll notice with Locrian is that it never really feels like, ah, we're in a key because there's no perfect fifth, like I said. So that's uh, an interesting thing to notice. Also, I should have said this earlier, but Locrian is the scale that you would use over a half diminished chord. So in jazz, that would typically be in a like, minor two, five, one progression. Uh, and that's also called a minor seven flat five chord. Uh, so that's where you'll use Locrian the most, is uh, in a jazz context anyway. Okay, so before we get to juice box, we are going to take this scale down an octave because that's where the juice box riff is, and we're going to take it a little faster. We're just going to play an E Locrian scale, this time in an open position, which is actually the same shape as we played up here starting on our first finger, but we've got open strings, so it'll feel a little bit different. So here we go with the drums. One, two, three, four. Okay, we are all ready for Juice Box. The one thing I want to say is that this is the closest I could find to a song that was in a Locrian key, and I mean, I know kind of a lot of songs, and I couldn't think of anything else. If you guys know of any, feel free to post below, but typically, I mean, I looked all around on the internet to see what other people had thought of as a Locrian song, and just the things that people think are Locrian songs are not Locrian songs. It's like some riff that has like a blues scale flat five in it, but it's not the same thing. So anyway, this tune is sort of in E Locrian for most of it, except finally at the end it resolves to D minor, which is the relative minor of E Locrian, like F major is the parent major scale, E Locrian, then D minor. So it finally resolves to D minor at the end, and your ear is like, whoa, D minor, thank God, I really wanted to hear that D minor, and I didn't even know. So, um... So, you know, Locrian is just an unstable scale. It's not a scale for creating a key with. It's a scale for transition chords. And, you know, you can write riffs in it and stuff, which is what Juice Box is. It's just a riff, really. Um, okay, so here we go. Juice Box. Are you ready? You can play this with a pick if you want. I'm not going to because I'm not very good at playing with a pick, and it doesn't sound that good when I do it. I'll do it privately, and you can use a pick or fingers because you're doing it privately. I can't hear you, so you can do whatever you want. You can play with your elbow. If you can play with your elbow, post a video on YouTube and we'll all watch it and be like, dude, you played with your elbow. Okay, juice box. Too much talking. Here we go. One, two, three, four. That's such a sweet riff. I'm gonna have to play that whole song once I finish filming this video. Learn the whole song is your homework. Learn the whole song of Juice Box. There's another really cool riff. It's sweet. It's all totally diatonic stuff built off of D minor or F major or E Locrian. Uh, so, learn that song as you, your homework. We're just going to do that riff for today. And uh, practice the Locrian scale in all 12 keys and practice improvising using it. And really make it your own and make it part of your vocabulary. And don't just watch this video and give up and think, oh, now I know all about Locrian, because it's not going to be of use to you unless you work with it further. Okay? So, that's. Uh, you've learned things. You've learned the Locrian scale. You know part of Juice Box by the strokes. They have tons of cool bass lines, by the way, if you're not into the strokes. There's so many good songs to learn. Anyway, thank you guys for watching. It's a little rambly today, but, uh, you know, bass is just so much fun. How can you not get pumped up? Uh, so, if you would like to see more bass lesson videos, feel free to subscribe and keep watching. If you'd like to support me in making these videos free for everybody, 
please uh, consider becoming a patron at patreon.com. You can learn more about that by clicking this link, or you can just make a one-time donation through PayPal or whatever uh, through my website. Lots of people have been doing that lately, and it's been really cool. I really appreciate that. And the more people uh, support me in that way, the more I can keep putting out these lessons for free, because I really don't want to... You know, I, I know other bass teachers put stuff behind a paywall, and I, I don't have any bad feelings about them doing that, but I don't want to. I want to keep making stuff for free, so I really appreciate your support in that regard. And uh, last thing is you can take bass lessons with me if you want to. Uh, you can do it over Skype. All you need is a webcam, a bass, and an amp, and a decent internet connection, and uh, we can work one-on-one. -on -one and have fun like that. So thank you guys for watching, and if you want to know about bass lessons, just shoot me an email at josh at joshfossgreen.com. Uh, that's all. I'll talk to you guys soon. Peace out.